Hey everybody, mm -hmm. Professor Hanlon here. It's a beautiful Friday afternoon here in September in Fredonia. Uh, we are up close and personal today, as you can see. I want to talk to you about creating the shape of the left hand in the lower positions, which of course is different than the shape of the left hand in the upper positions. But we're going to focus on the low end today. Uh, one of the things that uh, can really be challenging, I know a lot, a lot of times uh, if you're teaching K-12, you'll have people that maybe start on another instrument, say violin or viola or cello, and then come to bass. Uh, that in some ways is a more challenging transition than starting fresh. In any case, I hope that these tips are helpful to you. Um, the reason I say that is because there's of course a difference. Uh, if we're used to playing violin, many people know I played violin very seriously for a long time. And so when I switched to bass, this idea of, let's see, let me get in the frame here, this idea of, of the hand being rotated becomes this on the bass, which is really not what we look for. We're looking for a much more square approach to the instrument. So one of the easiest things that I've found to tell students is to say, imagine you're holding on to a can of soda, hanging out with your friends, hanging on to a can of soda, take that shape and put it right to the bass. And that is sort of the simplest way to do it. A couple things uh, to just aid and support that idea. Uh, Paul Ellison, who we all know as uh, one of the most wonderful bass teachers out there, teaches at Rice University. Uh, Paul, at uh, the ISB convention this last summer in Ithaca, he talked about using uh, this idea that when you play the bass, your hands should look like your hands. And I really, really love that. I think it's such a great way to think about it. So if you have a good hand shape on the bass like this, it's true, it looks like your hand. It's not contorted, it's not like this, it's not like that. It's nothing weird, it's just it's just like plenty of space in here, just a nice natural shape. Again, thinking about holding on to a can of soda. Let's talk a little more specifically now. As you can see, my fingers are curved and, and supported. They're not broken over like that, right? Uh, this is a very common problem for bass players. It's, I think, sometimes easier um, in, in the short game, you know, uh, for students to get their fingers down and get a note out. But big picture wise, in terms of reliability of shape and articulation and, um, uh, and then with the shape comes intonation, this is, is really not going to work for long, right? Uh, so it's really important to have that really comfortable and solid shape in the left hand with this nice kind of curve. One of the things I like to think about is if you're, you ever seen a tunnel, you know, on, on the road or whatever, and there's all the sort of stones that come up, come up the sides, and the one at the top is a wedge, and there's a lot of strength in that arch. I think we can think of the finger the same way. If I put weight right here, there's a lot of strength there, right? Now, the other side of that problem is being way too much on the top. And uh, this, of course, uh, just makes it really difficult to play. It can be painful, actually. Um, and you want to make sure that uh, you have that, that spot on the finger that's, that's not the fatty, super fatty part of the pad back here and not the ultimate tip either. It's maybe right about in there. Um, and then of course you want all the fingers to be on the same string, always helpful. And now let's discuss the thumb a little bit. I think it's easy for the thumb to get really, really straight like that, okay? But again, if we think about our hands looking like our hands, then I think it's even better to have an active joint in the thumb and, uh, and one that's not broken and flat in the same way that we like it on the other side for the fingers, right? Uh, also regarding the thumb, where do we put it? Behind what? Some people say it's got to be behind two. Some people say it's got to be behind one. Frankly, I think it depends on your hand. I think as long as it is in that general area of being behind one or two, that will be okay. One trick I've used, and you always have to caution the students not to actually do this, but if you were to drill a hole through the, uh, through the neck of the bass, sorry Mike, <laughs> uh, my bass maker, um, if, of course I haven't done that, but if you were to do that, uh, then you could put your fingers on either side of that hole. So your thumb would be on the bottom, and, and for me it lays out closer to one, that's how I play. I know some other people don't wear two is a little bit more comfortable. Uh, so just thinking of the thumb being behind there. And then the last thing I want to say is that the shape as you shift down here, at least in the lower half of the base, this, the shape should stay more or less the same. I think 
sometimes students I've seen, they, they try to shift and they leave their thumb behind, you know, and it's like, you, you can't do that, right? It's hooked to your hand. So, uh, so I like the idea of the whole hand moving up and down the base as one unit. Sometimes I think about the carriage on a typewriter moving along the track, you know, and uh, the idea that the hand is just one piece of sort of a piece of equipment kind of moving along the track, but not drastically changing shape in any way. It's the same general look the whole way. You can find my email on the Fredonia website if you have any more uh, questions about this. Feel free to let me know or leave a comment below, okay? And uh, I hope this has been helpful. All right, thank you.